thank you for joining me chaps for men's mental health now this is something we really need to be talking about because i've got two statistics to read to you now and we and they shocked me to my core we need to be talking about it because suicide is the leading cause of death for men aged 45 and under that's awful that is so bad why is this happening and in 2015, 75% of all UK suicides were male. We're talking about the male gender, okay? So anyone that falls into that category. Why is this happening, chaps? What is going on? Talk to me, talk to me. Talk to me in the description below. If you're feeling rubbish, talk to me in the description below because we want to get those statistics down. Both men and women are affected by mental illness, mental health problems. Um, but men seem to be less likely to get help. Maybe this is because they don't want to talk about their feelings. I'm not saying that all women want to talk about their feelings, but statistics show that women are more likely to go and seek help for mental health problems and men are far less likely. So why is this chaps? Do you feel weak? Do you feel like people are going to take the, take the piss? Do you feel like a pussy? Do you feel like, oh, you know, God, it's you know so embarrassing, and I just don't want to don't want to deal with it. And you're pushing it down. And I tell you what, you keep pushing it down and pushing it down and avoiding it. It's not going to go away. And then <clears throat> you'll get to breaking point. Either have a mental breakdown, a, a physical illness, um, uh, or even you know be hospitalised, or even go towards suicide. We want to get that statistic down. Why, why, why aren't you getting help? Please put any comments in the space below to let me know why you think men are less likely to get help and why you think this statistic is so high. Um, for me, I, I genuinely just don't know. I'm, I'm not saying all men don't want to talk about their feelings and some men, you know, maybe just sort of don't want to admit that there's a problem. Maybe they just don't want to face it. They're just pushing it down and burying it away. Whatever the issue is, please tell me because I really would like to know. Um, like I say, it affects everybody. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't affect everybody, but it affects men and women. One in four, okay? One in four doesn't mean one in four and all women, because there are men, but like I say, men are less likely to get help. I'm going to go, oh, sorry, recognising that there's a problem is not a weak thing. It, it actually saying, do you know what, I've got an issue, I need to get it sorted, makes you strong, makes you awesome, makes you in control of things rather than something being in control of you. If you get that treatment, if you go and get that help, get that support, then you might even have a better life from it. You might even get completely, you know, kind of like, I'm, I feel better. Or you might just learn ways to cope with anxiety, with stress or with a low mood. So I'm going to go through some warning signs now. If you see any of these, recognise any of these, maybe in someone you know or in yourself, then go and get the help. I'm going to put information in the description below. Today's information is taken from CALM, which is Campaign Against Living Miserably, and also the National, National Institute of Mental Health. Information in the description, as well as telephone numbers. Now, calling those numbers, Samaritans, <clears throat> I mean, there's, you know, you can see them on um, <clears throat> sort of suicide, sort of common suicide areas, you see the Samaritan sign. And, you know, go to them first. If you don't want to talk to someone face to face, then just ring them up. They are amazing. I've, I've had friends and family who've volunteered for Samaritans and it can really help. I've called them when I've been in a, in a, in a, in a bad place and they've been really, really helpful. Doesn't make you weak. It makes you strong. OK, right. So the warning signs, anger, irritability or aggressiveness. So you might be feeling angry. Anger comes from stress. It comes from the fight or flight of uh, uh, response. I've got a video on that. That's in the link below, in the description below as well. So it might be that you're getting more irritable with people, snapping at people. You might be wanting to lash out. You might be, you know, maybe punching a wall or, or maybe getting, you know, into physical fights or maybe even verging on, you know, kind of lashing out at people. This is, you know, this is um, unhealthy behaviour for you and those around you. But anger is a is a is a human emotion. We are not robots. We are humans. We feel anger. We feel sadness. We feel guilt. We feel jealous. Unfortunately, not all of those feelings are nice, but they are not wrong. They are not doesn't make you a bad person. It's how you deal with your anger and your irritability. So noticeable changes in mood, energy level or appetite. So you might just be feeling a bit flat a bit down it doesn't mean you're going to be in floods of tears or you know or, or you know lashing out or anything like that but it might just be that your energy levels down you might sort of think 
I swear I used to have more energy than this and obviously we're getting older and, and you know as we get older we don't have as much energy but it, it really can show what, what happens. I mean, the brain is part of the body, but people think it's sort of separate. But if this is being affected, it's going to have... This controls all of us, right? If this is being affected, it's going to spread down. It's going to change our levels of energy, change our appetite, and make us kind of feel really, really rubbish. It might be that, as well as these things, you might be having difficulty sleeping or sleeping too much. So you may be lying in bed at night, kind of... Ooh, 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 I'm really anxious about that, really stressed. And if this isn't like you, there's a change, so something's happened, then maybe this is a sign that you could be developing a mental illness. And there's, it's awful, don't get me wrong, I, you know, I have mental illness and, and you know, some days I just wanna get rid of it and, you know, and just don't wanna face it. But if you don't face it, if you don't take ownership of it, then it's gonna have a, an impact on your life and you may, you know, end up getting to a point where you reach a mental breakdown or you reach that point where you want to kill yourself. And we don't want that, okay? We really don't want that. Difficulty concentrating, restlessness, feeling on edge. You may be feeling, you know, at work or school or college, um, I can't function, I can't concentrate on that. I've got, you know, a big test and I can't think about it or I've got a meeting tomorrow and I'm, I'm really struggling. Or you may be feeling kind of restless, sort of, you know, agitated. Or it may be that you feel like you're just on the edge and you're about to drop. And it could be that this could mean that you're maybe going towards a mental breakdown. Or it might be, again, that you want to reach for suicide. Increased worry or feeling stressed. Again, if you're feeling anxious, you know, stress and anxiety, it's all the same thing. Anger, it's all, it's all linked together. It's all part of our fight, flight or freeze response. Um, and, you know, if you're feeling worried about things and feeling stressed, this may have an impact on people around you, especially if you're, you know, your, your girlfriend or um, your parents or your, your loved ones. They may be kind of thinking, why, you, you know, you, you seem really worried and you'll probably be like, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. I, I don't want to talk about it. Not all of you, but some of you may be just like, push it away and I don't want to deal with it. It won't go away. A need for alcohol or drugs. I know this chaps, I've numbed my, my emotional pain for years with weed, with alcohol, with cocaine, um, MDMA, whatever I could get my hands on. For most of my sort of late teens through my 20s really, I was on some sort of drug, probably up until I was in my, uh, you know, early 30s, at least said late 30s then. Um, but yeah, it, sorry. Um, it's, it's, it's something that maybe, you know, you're having a few extra cans or a few extra glasses of wine, or maybe you're kind of um, finding yourself going, hanging out with the, you know, people who take drugs and it's making you want to take drugs. I know what it's like to have that pain, that emotional pain numbed, but the long-term effects of alcohol and drugs on the body can have more impact on your mental health, making you feel worse. Um, and I, but I know why they help. They release dopamine, which makes us feel good. And then we keep wanting to reach for that drug to get that same level. But the more we reach for it, the more our tolerance grows. And then we have to take more in order to get that same high. So really, really important. Have you been doing more drugs or more alcohol? Have you recently been doing, getting into it a bit more? It could be that there is an issue there. Um, uh, sadness and hopelessness again doesn't mean you're crying all the time you may never cry but you may just feel sad you may just feel lone, um, sort of hopeless helpless like you know what's the point you may feel completely numb and I remember the f when I was when I felt numb for like the first time it was who am I well you know maybe you're feeling that who are you do you, do you not recognize yourself anymore all of this could be you know signs of depression or anxiety or other illnesses, but mainly the most common um, mental health problems are um, anxiety and depression. <clears throat> okay, so you may be having suicidal thoughts, but not only that, you may be thinking about death, your own death, having suicidal ideations, so imagining your own death or having sort of daydreams about it. I know that feeling as well, chaps. I, I have them I, um, with my mental illness. I get them quite regularly and <clears throat> I have to learn to cope with those thoughts and not act <clears throat> on those thoughts, excuse me. So if you're, if you're realising you're kind of thinking about death a bit more, then maybe there is an issue. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Feeling flat or having trouble feeling positive emotions. So you may just feel like you used to have fun, you used to enjoy stuff, and now you're like, you're not getting that same pleasure that you used to. This is because you may have lower levels of serotonin, which means that you could develop <coughs> depression. 
excuse me guys um you may also start engaging in high-risk behaviors so maybe you're kind of feeling like at home you don't want to be around your parents or something like that so you're kind of maybe hanging out in a gang or or a group of people that maybe you sort of see as a bit dangerous and you're trying if you're putting yourself in dangerous situations or being promiscuous cheating um you know feel like you're kind of not really yourself then these are all signs okay mental illness affects your thoughts your feelings and your behaviors if you're behaving differently you're thinking differently and feeling differently then this could be a sign of mental illness engage um sorry i've just said that one ongoing headaches or digestive pain so again we're all one part this brain makes has an effect on all of we're one body okay so what happens to them happens to the brain is happening to the body stress releases cortisol cortisol can cause all sorts of problems including low sperm count um, risk of impotence and even kind of putting on weight um, because it all goes to your tummy so maybe you're feeling like you know you're putting on a bit of weight or maybe you're getting IBS or you know having you know upset tummy headaches migraines this is your body's way of saying there's something wrong okay <coughs> what is with my obsessive thinking or compulsive behavior so you may be kind of thinking about um you know you're starting to maybe have sort of developing a sort of ocd type behavior so you might be kind of maybe you know finding yourself um very focused on being clean or very focused on being tidy maybe these are behaviors you're not used to there's more to ocd than that please check out my video in the description below thoughts behaviors that interfere with work family social life school college people around you if you're having negative thoughts it's going to make you go towards negative behaviors it's a cycle of thoughts feelings and behaviors and if you're if it's having an impact on any of those areas it could be you know really bad i lost a job because of my poor concentrating and and things like that and it's it's really hard because you're kind of i don't want to admit the fact that this is a problem but it could be a problem and if it's having an impact on other people as well that's really really not good but we don't want you upset either so i'm just saying both both sides of this i don't want anyone to be unhappy or to be suffering in any way unusual thinking or behavior so you might be having distorted thoughts negative thoughts constantly kind of this rapid thoughts going through your brain if you are having that it could be a sign of anxiety um, and then finally, um, uh, yeah, so sorry, that concern other people. So you might be your, your partner or your, your parent might be saying, well, you, you know, you're, you're doing this at the moment and is everything okay? And you might be like, yeah, everything's fine and want to bury it and push it away, but it won't go away. There are people you can call and here's some support for you guys. So I'm going to put all of this in the description below, but I would suggest if you don't want to go and do a face-to-face talk, -face talk with someone, call the Samaritans call one of the numbers in the description below um there's ones for ireland canada australia and us in this in the description below so if you're any from any of those countries then do i'm not just talking to males in the uk um thinking about your feelings doesn't make you less of a man okay it really doesn't doesn't make you a pussy doesn't make you any of those things it makes you strong you are a legend if you go and get support you really really are i promise that you i promised you that watch my videos learn about any mental illnesses take care of yourself and start to think is there something wrong do i need to address this and it might be that you go and go to therapy for a bit doesn't make you weak okay therapy is like a type of medicine anyway if you've got a headache you take paracetamol if you're feeling depressed or having anxious anxiety cbt is a really good one and i've been on cbt courses and i tell you what there's or any therapy group i've ever been on the majority is always women and i'm not saying that women you know just have more mental health problems it's probably about equal remember it's one in four okay one in four and that includes men and women um so I, like i say i've been to therapy groups and there's been less men because men aren't getting that help but you really need to guys we need to get that statistic down please check the description for all the information i've told you about today all those numbers and um i want you to make sure that you know you're being aware of what's going on it doesn't make you weak it makes you stronger and i think you'll be a legend for doing so please comment in the space below tell me any of your experience of this if you're a partner of someone um, who you think might be suffering from it check that video out as well if you are um, want to share it with anyone that you think do you know what maybe they they might need it please do that and please just share with me in the space below 
what your experiences of why do you think men are less likely to get help why do you think this statistic on suicide is so high anything you want to share with me please do it's so good to hear from you guys especially you chaps uh, well no everyone I want to hear from everyone there's no you know it's always a quality on the little blue pot so make sure you get in touch with with make sure you get in touch with those things in, uh, in the description if you need it. it doesn't make you weak it makes you stronger take care please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time take care now bye